You probably didn't make an unexpected archaeological discovery today, but someone else did. It might have been an archaeologist finding something unexpected in a place where they thought they'd find something else. Or it may have been someone clearing out their attic or digging up their garden. Surprising finds can happen anywhere, at any time. And this is the video that proves it. If you own a mansion in the desirable region of Brittany and France, it's already certain to be worth a lot of money. You don't really need the added bonus of finding 17th century gold coins hidden in the walls, but that's precisely what turned up during the renovation of a mansion there in 2019. The property's owners wanted to connect a barn and a plant nursery on their land, but when stonemasons came to knock down an interior wall, they found coins stashed away inside a metal box. A second discovery was made just a few days later when more coins were found secured inside a bag, hidden above a beam. There are 239 gold coins in total, most of which were minted during the reigns of French kings Louis XIII and Louis XIV in the 17th century. The property itself has been there since the 13th century, but has stood empty since the 18th century until the current owners acquired it and decided to carry out the renovations. Why the coins were hidden is unknown, as is the reason why the 18th century owners didn't collect them before leaving. The coins were eventually sent to auction and fetched a combined price of over $350,000. As you may already know if you've seen videos on our channel before, the laws that govern treasure discoveries in the United Kingdom are strict and punitive. Almost anything of value that's found there automatically becomes the property of the crown, with whoever found it paid a fee for their services. The fee is usually a fraction of the true value of the discovery. Here's a story about a discovery and a finder that found a loophole in the system. This set of Roman ritual bronzes was found in a field in North Yorkshire by amateur metal detectorists Mark Didlick and James Spark in May 2020. They took the finds to archaeologists at York Museum, who concluded that they're from the 2nd century and include a bust of Marcus Aurelius that was probably once mounted on a scepter. The discoveries escaped the parameters of the 1996 Treasure Act because the find contains no coins, isn't prehistoric, and doesn't contain anything made of precious metal. That left Mark and James free to cash in on the bronzes, which sold at auction for £185,000. That's equivalent to $260,000. The buyer was a museum, so the pieces will soon be on display to the public. Our next set of artifacts aren't technically a recent discovery, but they might as well be. They've been hidden from public view for a very long time. In 1583, the Venetian vessel the Gagiana sank in the Adriatic Sea in mysterious circumstances while carrying a cargo of goods bound for the Ottoman ruler Murad III. The treasures included embroidered silk, more than 1,000 elaborate wine glasses, chandeliers, and cannons. Most valuable of all, though, were the diamonds. Stories at the time said the captain sank the ship deliberately and ran off with the diamonds, although that was never proven. The wreck was eventually found in 1960, and some of the valuables aboard were recovered, but became the property of the Croatian government because the wreck is in Croatian waters. From the 1960s until now, the valuables have never been shown to the public. Nobody's even 100% sure what the divers were able to retrieve, we're about to find out. The current government of Croatia has decided that now is the right time to show their hand and cash in. So a new exhibit based on the Gagiana and its treasures is scheduled to open to the public in early 2022. We don't know whether they're holding any of the diamonds, but we're about to find out. In October 2021, Archaeologists found a beautiful lilac amethyst seal in Jerusalem. It would be a significant discovery regardless of the circumstances, but the experts think that one of the symbols engraved on the tiny ring might be a depiction of a type of balsam mentioned repeatedly in the Bible. 
If so, this is the first contemporary depiction of it ever to be found. The balsam tree, also known as Biblical Persimmon, is joined by a depiction of a bird that's most likely an ibis. According to records from the time, balsam was used in incense during the time of the Second Temple. We can't be sure of what it looks like because we have nothing to compare it to. Balsam and persimmon exist today, but the current orange persimmon fruit isn't related to the biblical kind, which was used in ointments and medicines as well as incense. There's a lot of guesswork involved here, but the archaeologists are as sure as they can be that the ring is about 2,000 years old, and as sure as they can be that it contains an image of a balsam tree. That might be as sure about biblical balsam as we are ever going to get. We don't often get excited about coin discoveries because they happen so often, but this one is a little different. It's a collection of more than 7,000 coins that were found in Ujlengil, Hungary in January 2021. The coins vary wildly in age, with the oldest dating back to Roman times and the most recent to the medieval era. The discovery comes from a site where 150 coins were discovered by metal detectorists in 2019. The amateurs were happy with their haul, but somehow managed to miss this much larger one right next to it. Almost all of the coins are silver, but four of them are gold. It's thought that the vessel that once contained them has been struck by a plow at some point in the past, leaving the coins free to spill out everywhere. The oldest of them, minted in the year 161, shows the face of Roman Emperor Lucius Aurelius. The most recent is a Vatican denarius issued by Pope Pius II in 1459. Historians think that the entire stash was hidden deliberately because of the threat posed by the Ottoman Empire, which advanced through the land rapidly in the 16th century. For whatever reason, whoever hid the coins never came back for them. We're heading to Denmark now for a story about an amateur metal detectorist who did a better job than the one who missed that Hungarian coin hoard. This treasure trove was found in a very muddy field on the Danish island of Sjarno, close to Horsens, over a three-year period that ended in September 2020. Most of the artifacts are ornate items of jewelry, many of which are either made from solid gold or include valuable pearls pendants, a gold needle, beads, and gold fragments that were used as a form of Iron Age currency are also included in the hoard, which professional archaeologists say is about 1,500 years old. Metal detectorist and dental assistant Therese Refsgaard found the first of the artifacts in spring 2017, then returned to the site several times over the following years to add to the collection. She now thinks she's found everything there is to find in the field. The gold comes from a time just before the beginning of the Viking era in Denmark and features patterns and designs that historians have never seen before. Some of the patterns are similar to those found on gold items in the Rome of the time, so there might have been more contact between Jarno and the Roman Empire than we're currently aware of. Not everyone would agree that 120 Days of Sodom deserves to be called treasure. It was written by the Marquis de Sade while he was in prison in the Bastille during the 1780s, although he never got to finish it because he was forcibly transferred out of the prison and didn't get a chance to grab it from its hiding place before he went. Between the few people who've read the 39-foot-long scroll or even had the stomach to do so, Opinions of its content vary wildly. Some consider it a masterpiece of profanity and excess, whereas others think it's the most disgusting literary pornography that any human being has ever committed to paper. Since being rescued from the prison cell, the original copy of the work has changed hands from one private individual or entity to another, most recently landing in the hands of a French investment firm called Aristophil which turned out to be a Ponzi scheme and went bankrupt. All of its assets were scheduled to be sold, including 120 days of Sodom. The scroll attracted considerable interest from outside France, at which point the government stepped in to have it declared a national treasure and thereby prevent it from leaving the country. 
it might not be a literary masterpiece, but it's officially treasure. The San Jose is probably the richest shipwreck in the world. The Colombian government would be able to verify that, but they're not telling anybody. That's frustrating because they're the only national government in the world that knows where the wreck is. The vessel went down when British ships and Spanish ships waged war off the coast of Colombia in 1708. Of all the ships the British sank that day, the San Jose was the most costly from a Spanish point of view. The vessel was a three-masted galleon vessel piled high with precious jewels and gold from South America, destined for the treasury of King Philip V at home in Spain. Estimates of the value of the treasures on board at the time of the sinking range between $1 billion at the most conservative and $17 billion at the most optimistic. A Colombian survey team finally located the wreck in 2015, somewhere near the port of Cartagena. That's when an argument started between the Spanish and the Colombians. The Spanish say the treasure is theirs because it's on their ship. The Colombians say it's theirs because it's in their water. Plus, the Spanish essentially stole it from South America anyway and have no right to it. The dispute is unresolved, and the valuables are still in the water. In 2015, archaeologist Barry Clifford claimed to have discovered the long-lost pirate treasure of Captain Kidd, thus ending one of the longest-running pirate mysteries in history. Scotland-born Kidd is one of the most notorious of all the 17th century pirates, hounding merchant vessels as they traveled across the Indian Ocean. He was eventually caught and executed in 1701, but never disclosed the location of his buried treasure. He hid it the year before by scuttling a ship in a safe location, but swore he'd only give it up in exchange for his life. He probably expected the plea bargain to work better than it did. Clifford's claim to have found the treasure close to the coast of Madagascar was very exciting, until a year later, a UNESCO investigation suggested that the treasure is not actually treasure, and the shipwreck Clifford had found wasn't connected to Captain Kidd. The so-called silver ingots that Clifford offered as evidence are actually just lead. This isn't the first time that Clifford and UNESCO have clashed, as his 2018 claim to have found the wreck of Christopher Columbus's flagship, the Santa Maria, met with a similarly blistering response. Clifford stands by his claim to have found Kidd's treasure and claims UNESCO has a vendetta against him. Scythian burials were usually communal affairs, with multiple bodies placed in the same tomb. When Russian archaeologists found a tomb containing just one body in Crimea in 2019, they suspected that its contents might be special, and they were right. The tomb belongs to a Scythian princess who lived and died in the first century, and she went to her grave surrounded by treasures worth more than $2 million. Her remains were found surrounded by more than 140 artifacts, including a beautiful laurel wreath made from eight gold leaves. She also had solid gold plates over both of her eyes, two solid gold rings, and a brooch engraved with images of Eros and a dog. The experts were very lucky to find the grave in unspoiled condition, because every single one of the other tombs they'd found in the area had been broken into by looters hundreds of years ago. Many of the items in the tomb are unique, with nothing matching their design known to exist anywhere else in the world. The objects are now on display in a museum in the Netherlands, but might soon return to a permanent home in Crimea. Buying gifts for friends and family for Christmas can be very expensive, which is why this next discovery was so perfectly timed for a homeowner in Hampshire, England. In December 2020, the anonymous homeowner was weeding their garden when they pulled up a few odd-looking coins. After doing a little digging, they found a total of 63 gold coins and a single silver coin to go with them, all of which appear to have been buried in their garden since the 15th century. The best guess of professional archaeologists is that they were buried deliberately somewhere close to 1540. Many of the coins were minted during the reign of King Henry VIII, and unusually, 
feature the initials of three of his wives. The letters J.S. for Jane Seymour, A.B. for Anne Boleyn, and C.A. for Catherine of Aragon appear on some of the coins. Coins bearing the mark of the spouse of a king have never before been found on English coins from this era. If the coins were to be sold at auction, which hasn't happened yet, it's been suggested that they'd attract a price of around £220,000. After the disappointment of the Captain Kidd treasure story, let's check out a pirate treasure discovery that lived up to the hype. In April 2016, two park rangers set out on patrol of Costa Rica's national park to assess the damage done by a recent storm. The storm was so severe that it had blown over a tree and torn up the ground next to it, revealing the presence of five wooden chests buried long ago. Inside the chests were a collection of religious icons, gold candlesticks, gold bars, jewelry, and gold and silver coins, with an estimated value of over $200 million. The park is located on Cocos Island, which is associated with dozens of pirate-related myths and legends. It now seems likely that at least some of those legends are true. This might even be the treasure of Lima, stolen by pirate captain William Thompson in 1820, and then never seen again. Failing that, it could be the looted treasure of the Portuguese pirate Benito Bonito. Whoever was responsible for putting this collection together managed to amass a collection of over 89,000 valuable items. We shouldn't admire pirates, but that's pretty impressive. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!